Learning to kill is a matter of habit. The more you have done it, the better you're at it. Those are two lines from the Norwegian musician Modi's song, A Matter of Habit, on his recent album, Unsongs. The track's a new English version of uh, Israeli musician Ishar Ashdot's 2012 original, and Ashdot written it based on first-hand testimonies from soldiers who'd served in the IDF, the Israeli army. Ashdot's a huge star in Israel, a kind of rock star, but that song met heavy criticism, and it was banned from being played on some Israeli radio stations. Abdelaziz Alhamza, he's a pretty regular 28-year-old guy with an engineering degree. He's into hip-hop. I can tell you that he loves to wear a snapback. I think this is the only photo I've seen of him not wearing it. He's got a great sense of humor. He likes hanging out with his mates. And he definitely spends a disproportionate amount of time on Twitter. In 2012, a small group of around 10 guys came to his hometown. At first, Abdulaziz told me, they were laughed at. Everyone was too busy getting on with life. Later, that ragtag bunch of guys came to seize control. Eventually, Abdulaziz, who was as totally non-political as you or I could imagine, and four of his friends felt they had no choice but to do something. Those guys that had shown up were part of what we've come to know as a totalitarian Islamic State. The city was Raqqa, and Abdulaziz and his pals had formed a group called Raqqa's being slaughtered silently. For their role, organizing underground resistance, Abdulaziz and his mates have since had to flee. For their own security, they now all live in separate cities across Germany, and several of their associates have been executed. But their resistance continues to operate. We all hear so many stories every day. They kind of flicker past us. But these two tales I've just shared with you stuck with me. They stuck with me for a specific reason, because they both reminded me quite powerfully that there's no such thing as an innately good or bad human being. No such thing as a comprehensively good or bad situation. We can all be as apolitical as Abdulaziz once was. We can all be activists, like he is now. At the very worst of times, we can find the best of humanity. And in the very best situations, we can still find oppression. Perhaps it's all, at the end of the day, just a matter of habit. Maybe I'm in danger of sounding a little bit fatalistic, pessimistic, but that's in fact the absolute opposite of where I'm getting to. That song I started with, it ends with a striking verse. Can I ask someone to be brave enough to, to read this out for us? Just go for it. Dive in there, someone. Learning to love is a natural thing. It will find a way if you just let it in. It will be strange at first, but then you'll see it. That learning to love is a matter of being. Being human is a matter of habit. A few baby steps, then you get better at it. Being human is a matter of habit. A few baby steps, then you get better at it. I spared you my singing, and I'll spare you from me reading the rest of that final verse. It's a hell of a song, and you should look the tune up, although I warn you it's quite catchy. But I love how this reminds us all that being human, just like being free, is an active process. There's muscles that need to be exercised rather than just assumed. Being human and being free, it's a thing we do, not a thing that happens to us. And if there's good and bad, light and shadow, free and censorious, in all of us personally, and in many of the situations that you can find out there in the world, how on earth do we arbitrate between these things? How do we manage to strike a balance? How do we even begin to try to live a good life? At the start of his epic poem, John Milton tells us that it's going to be his mission, and it is our destiny, to rise and fall upon the Aeonian Mount. It's a beautiful image, reaching back to ancient Greek times, conjured up in the 1600s by Milton and transmitting all the way through to us here and now. And what there is in common across all of these times is our human ability, each and all, to soar, to be heroes, and our universal proclivity in the very next instant to plummet and be villains. Which is why, my friends, I want to talk to you about creative acti activism and why I think we need art free and unfettered art, to offer what those winds on which we might soar, and also the mirrors in which we catch ourselves before we fall. And in fact, it's not only art that we need, but all those creative mediums that, when exercised freely, have the ability to nurture unbounded empathy. I mean journalism, activism, publishing, education, 
All those things that can help us to form a habit. The organization that I work for, Index on Censorship, was founded in 1972 to support exactly that, defending and championing these important modes of free expression that I've just shared with you. We started by carrying out work from behind the Iron Curtain, publishing it for the rest of the world to see. It was the idea of an English poet, Stephen Spender, responding to a Russian dissident's plea for empathy and space for free expression that was published in an English newspaper. And whilst we started as a magazine, and we still are one, there's a, a few copies on the counter over there which you're welcome to help yourself to um, for a, a small donation in the box. Um, the past 44 years have seen us evolve into an organization that also campaigns, advocates, hosts, and encourages discussion, maps censorship violations, and directly supports censored artists, journalists, activists, and others in numerous ways. At the heart of all of our work remains a constant core belief that we must never build barriers and constrictions to free expression. Because that, is in itself, that in itself can become a tempting habit. And because if we can all be tyrants, as much as we can all be angels, it's not just a tempting habit, but also quite a dangerous one. I'm really privileged in my job to see that all of this that I'm talking to you about isn't just lofty ideals, it's not just theoretical ideas, it's very real, very practical stuff. You could have seen it in South African theatre maker Brett Bailey's piece, Exhibit B, as you walked around looking challenging images from our common history directly in the eye. Although some found these tableaus so challenging that they didn't even want you to go there. You can see it in the rapper Smocky, who's inspired a sweeping movement for democracy in his country, Burkina Faso. Not without difficulty, his studio's been burnt down twice now, first by a rocket attack, and most recently this summer by a suspected arson. But Smocky continues. You can see it in the street art of Murad Sabai, amongst the ruins of Yemen. As the bombs fall around him, his public murals serve to both document travesties, and they also invite ordinary people from all sides to come out into the streets and paint with him. He's building the piece right through his very process. You can also see it in Norwegian folk musician Modi playing his concerts across Europe. One of those songs I, I share with you at the start here. And Modi's reinventing band protest songs, challenging the commercial orthodoxy of the music business and telling stories of the mad marginalized. His album Unsongs includes stories of the Berbers of Algeria, dissidents from Chile, Russia, Vietnam, anti-war movements in the UK and Israel. And he's taking those and he's sharing them with the masses, all stories that many would prefer you never knew about. There are many who would prefer that you didn't encounter Exhibit B's tableau, Many who would like you never to hear Smocky or Modi's songs, never to see Murad's murals. But at the heart of all of our work at Index remains that constant belief that we must never build barriers and constrictions to anyone's freedom of expression. Because if any and all of us can be wrong, who on earth has the right to begin to do that? This summer, I stood looking at Michelangelo's David, a stat the statue in Florence, holding his slingshot. It's extraordinary, like it's on the verge of springing into life. But of course, it's me, the audience, who brings that animation to it. It's me who breathes life into the stone. And in a way, all of us sitting here today are like David. And all of those creative activists that I've mentioned, they breathe that life into us. Exhibit B's cast members do it with their own bodies. Smocky does it with his microphone. Murad does it with his paintbrush. Modi does it with his guitar. They all offer us winds on which to soar, gasps and glimpses of freedom. Index on Censorship exists to help people like these, people who are actually really not so different from you and me, people who blow these winds on which we can all soar. Why? Because being human is a matter of habit. A few baby steps, then you get better at it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.